Welcome to Wealth Wisdom. If you have ambitions to achieve financial success, please leave yes in the comment, and we are here to help you obtain insight and build wealth. The book we are going to share today is Future Skills by Bernard Marr. The New Literacy If 2030 seems far away, consider this, it's estimated that by the year 2025, up to 85 million jobs could be replaced by machines, while 97 million new roles suited to human-AI collaboration will emerge. This transformation will impact all industries. In order to ensure that you can thrive in this digital future, learning digital literacy, meaning comfort and capability with technologies, is essential. To get started, individuals should assess their current digital skills and tap into resources to help them improve. Governments and employers should also begin to invest in digital literacy training. This is less about having all employees becoming tech experts, and more about gaining awareness of how technologies like AI are transforming work. Data will power the fourth industrial revolution, so organizations will need data literate employees to extract value from it. That means being able to access, work with, analyze, and communicate insights from data. To expand your own digital literacy, start by approaching new tech tools with curiosity. Keep reading, watching informational videos, taking online courses, whatever learning methods suit you best. Prioritize developing your soft skills, too. By embracing change with optimism and dedicating yourself to continual growth, you'll be ready to flourish alongside these intelligent machines. Terminology like dataset, as well as quantitative, qualitative, cross-sectional, and longitudinal data, is useful to know. It's also useful to know how to identify good data, when it's accurate, consistent, current, and complete. Data analysis uncovers patterns and trends that can inform decisions, so ask human-oriented questions to identify business challenges that data can solve. But don't gather data aimlessly, ensure it serves a purpose. This is especially important because ethics around privacy and security will be increasingly vital. Many of today's employees lack confidence in data skills. But online self-study courses in statistics, visualization, and industry-specific data literacy can help. With the right knowledge, mindset, and tools, digital and data literacy can unlock enormous potential. And as data proliferates, these skills will become even more essential for career success. Before we continue, if you are interested in this topic, please consider subscribing and give us a thumb up. Let's continue. Critical thinking is key. Critical thinking is crucial as technology transforms society. This skill is increasingly vital amid fake news and polarization, which may further divide people into opposed camps. Social media bubbles will worsen the situation by limiting information exposure and encouraging cognitive biases like confirmation bias. So what is critical thinking, exactly? It means analyzing information objectively, without biases that distort thinking. It involves actively and independently forming thoughts based on evidence, not passively accepting claims. Critical thinkers spot inconsistencies, ask thoughtful questions, determine what's relevant, and consider consequences before drawing conclusions. This, in turn, leads to better decisions. Unlike fixed traits, critical thinking is a skill anyone can cultivate through practice. As technology proliferates, humans must hone abilities that machines lack, like objective analysis. Sharpening this ability will allow people to cut through polarization and misinformation, enabling individuals to understand diverse perspectives, unravel complex challenges, and push past outdated assumptions. With discipline, we can all become better critical thinkers. So, how can you practice critical thinking? First, always vet information rather than accepting it at face value, even if you generally agree with it. Consider the source and their motives. Gather additional information to fill gaps, and ask probing questions like who, what, and why. Look to reputable, unbiased sources like established news outlets, nonprofits, and education institutions. Avoid anonymous sources who might have an agenda. And check dates, as old info may be outdated. Be careful with social media, 
and make sure to verify the information's accuracy before sharing it online. Watch for emotionally charged language and limited perspectives that can indicate bias, as well as appeals to emotion over logic. You'll need to question your own biases, too. To do this, work with a mentor to get objective feedback. Take online courses on critical thinking and cognitive biases. The goal is to draw your own conclusions based on thorough, impartial analysis of all evidence. Sharpening these skills takes practice, but it'll allow you to cut through misinformation and make better decisions. The Emotion Factor Emotional intelligence, or EQ, is the ability to perceive, understand, express, and manage your own emotions, and to understand the emotions of others. A key part of EQ is empathy, or the ability to understand different perspectives. EQ isn't just a buzzword. It's been found to complement IQ in predicting achievement among individuals. In one study, insurance agents with high EQ sold policies worth double those sold by low EQ agents. Machines are getting better at detecting emotions through sensors that analyze odors, voices, wireless signals, and more. But human EQ will always remain essential for relationships, self-awareness, listening, thoughtful action, stress management, conflict resolution, leadership, and complex decisions. In our fast-paced digital era of instant gratification, EQ helps us be more present with our thoughts, delay reactions dictated by emotions, and take time to thoroughly solve problems. So while technology threatens to decrease human empathy, EQ counters this by enabling an understanding of diverse views. For instance, with all the digital interactions we have nowadays, human EQ is even more vital for delivering positive customer service, engaging employees, and making good judgment calls. AI may someday vastly improve its own emotion recognition abilities, but it can't replicate human empathy. Individuals can consciously develop EQ by identifying and managing their emotions, expressing empathy, resolving conflicts calmly, and taking time with decisions. Organizations should also teach EQ skills and choose leaders with high EQ to reduce turnover and boost engagement. To cultivate your own EQ, practice listening, pay attention to both words and body language to understand the emotion behind what's being said. Make a conscious effort to put yourself in other people's shoes and empathize with their perspective. You can also try online EQ measurement tools and courses to boost self-awareness and empathy. The goal is to become more attuned to your own and others' emotions, so you can manage reactions and make better decisions. Building EQ is a lifelong practice that'll allow you to interact positively with others, handle stress, and make emotionally aware choices, things that digital tools won't ever fully be able to do for you. Communication is more than language. Interpersonal communication describes the human exchange of information, emotions, and meaning. It encompasses oral communication like spoken discussions, written communication through emails and messages, nonverbal communication via body language and facial expressions, and listening skills like focused attention and interpreting unspoken cues. Nonverbal signals convey an astonishing 93% of a message's full meaning. With work communications increasingly happening remotely via digital channels that lack these nonverbal cues, interpersonal abilities are more important than ever. There are different communication styles to be aware of, too. Assertive communicators directly express their needs while considering others' perspectives, this is what you should strive toward. Aggressive types forcefully push their agenda. Passive communicators avoid voicing their opinions to prevent conflict. Passive-aggressive people appear calm but harbor frustration. Manipulative communicators use lies and emotional tactics to get what they want. Knowing people's predominant communication style, as well as your own, can help you tailor messages more effectively. For example, directly asking a passive communicator for their thoughts makes them feel heard. Being concise and solution-focused works well with aggressive communicators. While AI chatbots have grown more sophisticated at basic communication, they can't yet replicate nuanced human interaction. In-person emotional intelligence, empathy, humor, diplomacy, rapport building, and influence remain invaluable and irreplaceable. So, 
How do you become someone who conveys thoughts with confidence, clarity, and respect? To hone your interpersonal communication skills, consider your goal and audience when choosing a communication style and medium. Then tailor the message accordingly. For written communications, proofread to ensure clarity, conciseness, and proper spelling and grammar. Avoid sarcasm in writing as it rarely conveys well. When presenting information, craft it into an engaging story or anecdote. But don't go overboard, keep things simple and authentic. Always over-communicate important points, never assume something's obvious. Recap key takeaways and next steps, and check for understanding. And practice active listening, make eye contact, nod, take notes, and ask follow-up questions. For remote teams, acknowledge that communicating remotely differs from in-person interactions. Use the right tools for each task. Opt for video chats to convey nonverbal signals. With consistent practice, you can evolve communication skills for the digital age. The fundamentals remain constant, know your audience, craft your message thoughtfully, and listen attentively. Diversity and cultural intelligence. Our increasingly interconnected world means more frequent encounters with diverse cultures. So the ability to collaborate across differences is essential for success, especially as it's been shown that organizations with diverse workforces and leadership consistently outperform homogenous ones. Diverse perspectives spawn more innovation to serve diverse customers, and top talent increasingly seeks out diverse employers. With diverse viewpoints, of course, comes challenges for communication, conflict resolution, and cohesion. This is where cultural intelligence, or CQ, becomes vital, the ability to relate to and work effectively with diverse people. CQ builds on skills like empathy, communication, critical thinking, and adaptability. What do we mean when we talk about diversity? Broadly, it refers to all the varied ways people differ, spanning race, gender, age, culture, religion, politics, sexual orientation, and more. Equity is another important term in this conversation. It means providing fair access, opportunities, and treatment for all. Inclusion means making diverse people feel welcomed, valued, and empowered to contribute their own perspectives. As workplaces diversify, leaders should also work to foster equitable and inclusive cultures where everyone can thrive. To build up your cultural intelligence on an individual level, first develop self-awareness around your own culture and identify your potential biases. Try to remain open-minded and respectful toward other cultures and worldviews. Observe others' norms and expectations, and adapt your behavior accordingly while staying true to yourself. Above all, seek to understand rather than judge, and try to find common ground. Different people all over the globe ultimately want very similar things, a decent life, happiness, and good relationships. So be curious about other perspectives. Listen actively to understand different viewpoints. Consume news, books, and movies from other cultures to broaden your worldview. You might enjoy traveling to immerse yourself in different cultures, or you could attend a religious service outside your own faith. In parallel, work on related skills like empathy, adaptability, and collaboration. With an open mindset and ongoing commitment, we can all become more culturally intelligent and make better decisions, increase innovation, and strengthen relationships in the process. After all, it's our shared humanity that matters most. That's the end of today's sharing. If you like our content, please give us a thumb up and share it with your friends. See you next time.